Although you wouldn't recognize it from this channel, I've actually reviewed the entire Shantae franchise. Back when it released on the PlayStation Vita, Shantae Half Genie Hero was not compatible with the PlayStation TV until later on, so I wasn't able to do a video review. And then I went on to do the 3DS games, the original, Risky's Revenge, and Pirate's Curse. Now things have come full circle, the Nintendo Switch has gotten a Shantae game and I'm going to review it for you. Finally, my first chance to do a video review of the game, here is my review of the Nintendo Switch version of Shantae Half Genie Hero. Half Genie Hero takes place sometime after the events of Pirate's Curse. Shantae has a foreboding dream about the Genie Realm being in danger, and the town that she's defending, Scuttle Town, is attacked by Risky Boots. Once the attack's over, she gets fired from her job as the town guardian, and is sent on a quest to help create a device to protect the town. The story of Half Genie Hero is really comical and really entertaining, especially for serious fans, but as I noted with the PlayStation Vita version, the story kind of assumes you know everyone already. Most of the cast are returning characters from previous games, and the game doesn't do anything to explain to you who they are, how you know them, or anything like that. It's certainly enjoyable with no prior knowledge, but it is definitely not recommended. Like previous games of the series, Shantae Half Genie Hero is a 2D action platformer. You know, like Rayman or the Mario series. Across most of the game, you'll be traveling across side-scrolling areas, fighting enemies, collecting secret items, and fighting bosses to get new transformations to access new areas. It's most similar to Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, because you jump from level to level instead of exploring an absurdly large 2D world map like in Risky's Revenge. Now one thing I do want to get out there is I've gotten some press emails from Xseed Games saying that the Nintendo Switch version of Half Genie Hero comes packed in with the upcoming story DLC, the Risky Boots campaign. My review copy does not. I've gone through the game, I've 100%ed all three game modes, and it's not there. There's no day one patch. As far as I can tell, the Risky DLC will come to the Switch when it comes to everything else. Now when you go into the game, there are three different game modes you can go through, only two unlocked at the, at the get-go. You got Shantae mode, which is the default game mode, Hardcore mode, which is a much more difficult mode with different boss patterns, faster enemies, more enemies, less items to stockpile, really gives the feel of the older Shantae games with its difficulty. And then you've got Hero Mode, which is unlocked after you beat the game once. Hero Mode is basically speedrun mode. You start the game with all of your story unlock transformations, so it takes significantly less time to collect everything and beat the game. And once you're in the game, your progression is basically exploration, doing item quests, and going through stages. At every point of the story, you'll need to find a specific item. Finding this item will involve talking to NPCs in your town hub world, exploring the hub world and the stages, and then eventually finding the item and returning it to the person that wants it. Now, since we're talking about exploration, this has been a key factor for the series from the get-go. Exploration in Half Genie Hero is utilized by transformations. Every time you beat a boss, you get a new animal transformation that lets you ex access new areas. The monkey allows you to climb walls. The harpy lets you fly. You get the idea. So whenever you get a new transformation, you typically need to go back to a previously beat stage and access those new areas that are only accessible through those special powers. And you find not only story items here, but you can also find hidden items, like heart containers to increase your max health. And that's really a fun factor of Half Genie Hero. Not only playing through the stages, but exploring, finding what new things you can find. And this amount of exploration is crucial if you're playing hardcore mode. And then you've got combat, of course. You can use your hair to whip at the enemies for normal attacks, and you've got spells that use a magic gauge that you can buy from the upgrade shop. And the last things we should cover are boss fights and length. Each boss has a specific pattern, as you'd expect from a 2D platformer, but not all bosses are just fighting the enemy. The second boss, for example, the Giga Mermaid boss. The first phase of the battle, you're running around trying to free her from the chains that are binding her, and you don't actually attack her herself to calm her down until the second phase. Now let's talk about Link. I went into the Nintendo Switch version 
having already completed the game on the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV. I went into Shantae mode and cleared it in about six and a half hours. Then I went into Hero mode, which took me about three and a half hours, and then Hardcore mode, which took me four and a half hours. Note that if you've never played this game before, it'll probably take you about eight hours to finish. That's how long it took me to run through it the very first time I played it on the Vita. So it's a decent amount of length. Plus, you're going to have even more length once the Risky Boots Story DLC comes out this summer. As far as the presentation is concerned, it looks incredible. The Vita version looked great, but the Switch version looks true HD. On the Vita, some of the environments had jagged edges here and there. The graphics in the Switch version are absolutely flawless. In docked mode, tabletop mode, or handheld mode, I never saw any blemish, no blurring, no jagged edges anywhere. It looks absolutely perfect. And the performance holds that up as well. It only takes a few seconds for each load time, and the frame rate pretty much stays at 60 frames per second throughout the entire game. Now let's talk about battery life. This is a 2D game, so I had some pretty decent expectations. Here's what I got from 100% to 0%, with maximum brightness with the Wi-Fi on, 3 hours and 52 minutes, maximum brightness with the Wi-Fi off, 4 hours and 2 minutes, low brightness with the Wi-Fi on, 4 hours and 43 minutes, low brightness with the Wi-Fi off, 5 hours. So you're not going to get as much battery life out of Shantae as you will in, say, Disgaea 5, but you're still going to be able to clear over half of the game on a single charge. In conclusion, Shantae Half-Genie Hero makes a seamless transition to the Switch and brings true HD Shantae series to both the console gamer and the handheld gamer. Now the story still expects you to know all of the characters beforehand, but the game is filled with just as much color, humor, and hair-whipping fun that fans of the series have waited those long years for. Reviews to Go rates Shantae Half-Genie Hero for the Nintendo Switch a 9 out of 10. If you'd like to comment on this further, feel free to below or head to the website at www.reviewstogo.com.